28-year-old Matthew Vokes is a shopping junkie whose finances are in desperate need of rehab. When I'm spending, it's like a high. I never look at prices. Never ever look at the prices in the stores. If I see something, I'll go and buy it. Ironically, Matthew works in finance and brings home £2,700 a month, but he's spending twice that, leaving him with a colossal debt of £55,000 and rising. Matthew's spending knows no bounds, from online shopping to luxury holidays, top-notch gadgets to the must-have beauty products. I queued in boots for the new Perfect and Protect, because I'd heard it was good. Matthew's love affair with shopping means he's spending all his spare time with his credit cards. My plastic friends, that's what credit cards are to me. They're always there when I need them. My nickname is actually Plastic Matt. His plastic fantastic lifestyle is a major worry for friends and family. I think that if Matt doesn't clear his debt fairly soon, he's going to end up bankrupt. I don't see how he's going to manage when he gets older if he doesn't sort himself out now. But Matthew refuses to grasp the seriousness of his plight. I mean, I've always thought having a lot of debt is normal. People say to me, how can you sleep at night? And I'm, I'll go to bed, that's it. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry and lifestyle expert Jay Hunt are about to take on their toughest spenderholic yet. Yay! Benjamin will push him to his emotional limits to discover what's behind his compulsive spending. I don't know why I've always got it in my mind that I can always be that little bit better. And when it comes to his bad behaviour, Jay won't be taking any prisoners. Try the bloody things on. If they don't fit you, don't get them. And it's not just Jay who loses her rag. I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, I'm Matthew, not doing it. Matthew, this is what we need to... Where are you going, Matthew? lives in central Birmingham with his brother Stephen and friend Richard in an immaculate £240,000 house that he bought three years ago. At 28, everything in Matthew's world is just perfect. I bought her because she matches the carpet in my house. If he wants it, he gets it. I, I like spending, so you know, I, I buy things and I don't even need them. You know, one day you've got maybe one coffee machine, the next week you've got, you know, three coffee machines. I just bought a suitcase in case I go away anywhere. Um, although I've already got three. Most of my time is taken up with spending or thinking of ways to spend my money. I don't think I've actually got a hobby where I don't spend. And his biggest hobby is looking good. In the past two years, he spent two and a half thousand pounds trying to achieve the perfect smile. I'd like my teeth to look like Whitney Houston's teeth. I think she's got fantastic teeth. But a cabinet full of cosmetics can't hide the ugly truth. There's his monthly £740 mortgage and debt repayments totalling £1,065 every month. Matthew's teetering on the brink of financial ruin and risks losing his house and everything in it if he can't stop the urge to splurge. Not even his mum can make him see sense. He doesn't need to spend what he spends. We tried telling him not to do it, but it goes in one ear and out the other. And brother Stephen confirms his spending isn't genetic. If I've got the cash, then I'll go out and pay cash, whereas he's, he's got his credit cards and he'll just go out and he'll just stick it on the plastic. Living for the moment could come back to haunt him. If I get hit by a bus tomorrow, I'll know that I've had a great life. I've had everything I've ever wanted to. Yeah, I've never wanted for anything. If I live to 70, which there is a good chance I'm going to, then I will be a bit stuffed because obviously this debt isn't going to go on its own. Matthew's home is a new build in Birmingham city centre. Benjamin and Jay have been given free reign in his house while he takes a break across town. They're here to look for clues as to what's behind his spending addiction. It all just looks brand new, Jay. But can you imagine? It, they all look the same. If you were a bit drunk on a Friday night, you'd, you'd be like key home, in everybody you? else's you'd, door. Well, you'd meet your neighbours. Uh, I don't know what they're going to find. Uh, I've got butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling very, very nervous. Oh, look, Benjamin. Please take, take shoes off. Oh, I hate that in people's houses. I think it's so unfriendly. Yeah, so I'm going to go up here. Come on, shoes off. 
So, show homey, isn't it? There's I not mean, much it's... depth to the luxury, mm. is there? This is a person who may like to live only on the surface and may not like to go beneath it. Mm. Which ain't going to be great for me. Come on, more okay, clues needed. On. Matthew's glossy lifestyle gets a bit more gritty in his bedroom. Oh, look, he's one of these. One of what? <laughs> labels still ah. on. Well, never worn. Well, you're not going to wear it with the label on, are you? Mm. And loads and loads of shirts. But there is loads and loads of stuff everywhere in here. Well, the, again, there's quite a lot more gadgets. It does seem to be, again, rather compulsive all over the top. Why does he need... How many screens have you got in here? Three, mm. four? Why does he need two telephones? The thing that's going to embarrass me the most is when they go into my ensuite and they find all the products that I've got. Too late, Matthew. Oh, my. Moisturisers, loads of aftershaves. Those aren't cheap, those teeth whitening kits. Loads of makeup, hair products. Young Mr Vokes is clearly more worried about his looks than his bank balance. 19 shells of hair products, beauty creams and designer fragrances would run into the thousands. There's so many products here, there's no way that he's using up all these products. Oh, Jay, these, these are your little friends. Aha, Look. hand them over. I'm going to take these, but I can't seem to find any statements anywhere. I'll have a look downstairs. Really? The areas I think they're going to pick on mostly is probably going to be my study, where I've got everything that I just don't need in my house because I don't even work from home. But it's not just excess office gear he should be worried about. But look at all of this. He's buying stuff online on this website, 175 yeah. purchases. Oh, yeah, it's an internet auction site. So it's like, you know, how much money is he spending on that? What's what that? Credit card statement. But there's only two credit card statements. There's about 15 credit cards. I know. Back. I'm just wondering whether he shreds all this stuff. <laughs> Maybe. Removing Maybe the does. evidence. Convinced there's more to Matthew's spending story, they take one last look and stumble upon a hobby graveyard. Aha, Jay, look. I think we've hit the mother load. Ah. It's all the gear. TVs, skis, bikes, look at all of these. Boots, boots, boots and boots. Jay, is it possible that most of this stuff hasn't actually been used? Oh, we've got to seriously sort this out. This man needs your kind of brand of discipline, Jay. Hard. Having sifted through Matthew's stuff, Benjamin and Jay want to confront him with some home truths. Now I am nervous. <laughs> Once blindfolded, they lead Matthew inside to unveil the scale and horror of his debt. What do you think? There's lots of me everywhere. Well, what I'd like you to do is you may notice that each one of you is wearing a T-shirt with a black patch on the front. OK. I'd like you to reveal what's underneath. £4,550. £4,550. Oh, OK, keep looking. Matthew seems to be uncovering a pattern. £4,550. So, have you got any idea what this represents? Something I've bought, maybe? What, a single purchase? I bloody well hope not. Could quite possibly be, yeah. £4,550 is the average person in this country's debt. Right. OK. Do you know why we have 12 people here? I can only now assume that it must be how much I owe. Yeah. All of them. So you're carrying the debt of 12 average people in this country. Right. On a single pair of narrow shoulders. The other thing is, you've got to work 12 times harder to pay this amount back. Right. How do you feel about that? Gobsmacked. Very. I always thought it was quite normal. I just, I just thought Everybody's everybody debt. had that sort of level of debt and everybody was coping. True. So you're beginning to see the scale of the problem that confronts us all here? Definitely. 
Not very nice. I'm almost speechless. Yeah. Benjamin and Jay need to put a stop to Matthew's consumer cravings. First step of rehab, a week of cold turkey. First up, Jay wants to find out if he has any idea where his money's been going. In an average week on non-essential items, right. how much do you think you get through? Probably about £150. £200. Right. Pounds. Yeah. OK. About that, I would think. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> well, we've worked it out that the okay. total amount you get through on an average week on non-essential items is £701.30p. He's spending more than his entire weekly pay just on luxuries. No. I'm serious. On average. Honestly, oh my God. <laughs> That's very shocking. You are completely and utterly clueless, aren't you, really, about where it's all going? I didn't think it was anywhere near that much. That's all, clearly. Because if you think you're spending 200 and you're getting through 700, where's the 500 going? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's going somewhere, clearly. But... £25,000 a year that you don't know where it's going. So how much do you think you could live on, minimum, non-essential items for seven days? Seven days? Yeah. Uh... Minimum you can live on. Uh, lunch is four pounds a day. Petrol's fifty pounds. Is that, hold on, why is lunch four pounds? Because I was going to buy it. But lots of people manage to eat their lunch without spending more than four pounds. Sometimes it's probably more, but. Oh. So how much, Matthew, do you think the minimum amount you could live on for seven days on your non-essential items? I'd probably say about half what I think I'm spending, maybe eighty. Oh, that's pretty generous. I'll tell you what I was thinking. Yeah. 40 quid. 40 pounds. Oh. Is this filling you with absolute dread? Yeah. It's quite scary, 40 pounds. Cold turkey is giving things up. It's definitely going to be a cold turkey. Completely. Back at home, Matthew can't wait to tell his brother Stephen about his cold turkey sentence. <sighs> God, that they've taken all my money away and I've got £40 a week to Seriously? live on. I've stopped making sandwiches for that. I know. Catch the bus. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll be sponging off you. I'll be like, I've got no money. Give me some money, Stephen. Please, give me some money. Well, I think he'll cope to the best of his ability. I mean, I reckon he'll cheat from time to time because he's like that. But it's a case of having to, really, if he wants to clear his debt then. He's got no choice but to stick to it and cope. He's got to learn that he can't have what he wants when he wants. Looks like his more sensible brother Stephen has got him sussed for the week ahead. Day one of cold turkey and Matthew is finding it hard to break old habits. Instead of walking the one and a half mile journey, he's decided to drive. I have thought about walking, but just the whole walking. <laughs> I don't really do walking. And it's biting into his budget. In total, I suppose, we're looking at about an extra £23 a week if I, if I didn't drive at all. That's probably what I'd say. Day two of cold turkey. And unbeknownst to Benjamin and Jay, Matthew sets off on an all-expenses-paid trip to London to celebrate friend Richard's birthday. Luckily for Matthew, cold turkey is off the menu as he laps up three days of luxury. Hey there, really nice hotel last night. Had breakfast provided for me this morning by the hotel, which is quite good. Um, everything's been paid for so far. I'm just going to go and see the, uh, the show now. Later on, we're probably going to be going out. Um, well, we're going to a celebrity run restaurant first of all, so that's all paid for as well by my friend Richard's parents, which is very nice of them. So my uh, cold turkey week's going quite well so far. He's halfway through cold turkey and living on a budget is the furthest thing from Matthew's mind. <laughs> right, so uh, day four cold turkey um, week on a luxury cruise down the Thames there in Linden. Uh, not having to pay for any of it myself again, thank God. Matthew has managed to blag his way through three days of unabashed decadence. 
spending just £13 of his £40 budget. <laughs> Still in London, Matthew meets with Benjamin, who's keen to uncover the real root of his addiction to luxury living. If he wants to address his massive debt, he needs to start looking at the potential causes for it. So why are you so in debt? Because I don't stop spending. I always want new things, you know, like nice new things, like clean things. Kind of like perfection. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I suppose. Um, but there is a sense in which you know, there's a reason why you started spending in the first place. And I think for you, your identity has become this spendaholic. And I think you avoid what's beneath that. Tell me what you don't like about yourself. No, I suppose it's school. Yeah, I always wanted to be the popular one and have more friends. And I've always wanted to have, you know, more of my own stuff. And You've always wanted to be more acceptable. Yeah, maybe. So you could say, I didn't like that I wasn't as popular as I wanted to be. That makes sense? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, I guess, yeah. You guess or you know? Yeah, it probably is true, yeah. Yeah. But you don't really like thinking about it? No, really. Why not? I don't know. It's a long time ago now, I guess. With Matthew refusing to talk about his early school years, Benjamin switches tack to family. Matthew grew up in Sutton Coalfield on the edge of Birmingham with one younger brother in a traditional two-parent family. But it soon becomes clear this is another subject that's off limits. You know, I get a sense that you feel threatened by talking about this. My family have always been there for me and I wouldn't want anything to... to come out that might make them think that any of my problems have been caused through them, so... But for you, it seems like that, you know, it's got to be all perfect or it's a disaster. I think I'm the same with everything, though. It's not just... Yeah. It's not just my family. No, I understand that. But, I, you know, I think it's quite important for you to have a perfect life, not just physically, but emotionally. And you don't really like to look at imperfection in yourself or your past or the people you're close to. Because that's a flaw. Yeah. And it's a flaw that we can't understand unless we're prepared to look at flaws. Do you feel trapped by that? Sometimes. Claustrophobic, maybe. Mm -hmm. Does your life feel a bit claustrophobic? It can do, I suppose. I always have to try and make sure that, you know, if I'm going out, I'll spend ages getting ready to try and make sure that everything's spot on. That... And it's not because you love looking good, it's because you're terrified of looking wrong, isn't it? So your life is run through a backdrop of terror. Does that feel sometimes how it is? Yeah. So if I'm going to help you, we have to figure out what's really going on that really makes you spend. If you want to look at that, come with me. Confronting his problems head-on is a new challenge for Matthew. Will he rise to it? I hated the psych chat today. It was horrible. He was asking me all sorts of questions that I just knew that I really, really didn't want to have to answer. And it's kind of upsetting. I could feel myself sort of like filling up and I was a bit like, ooh, don't ask me these questions. But I don't know. I don't think my spending goes as deep as he was like trying to make out Benjamin. I just think, literally, that I'm just a spenderholic. And just because it's me. Back in Birmingham, and with only his mates and their bar of chocolate for comfort, the cold turkey budget is starting to affect Matthew. Giving up is hard to do. I've not really done very much this week, to be honest with you. I've just laid around, laid around, watched TV, played on my laptop. Not really done anything exciting. I've not been out like I used to. I've not been to any bars or, or pubs or clubs or anything. My shower's just broken, which God knows how much it's going to cost, but it's probably going to be sort of three or four weeks cold turkey money. 
Realising how tight money really is, he's traded his usual £4 lunch for a distinctly unluxurious £1.18 option, saving him £2.82. By day seven, any novelty of cold turkey has totally worn off. On a shopping trip for essentials, Matthew splurges a sixth of his £40 budget on an extravagant treat. When I got some cherries, seven quid. I was so not expecting them to be anywhere near that. In his last 24 hours, he's blown £28. I've just been having a few sort of final thoughts of my um, of the week as it's coming to an end. It's, it's, it's confirmed there is just no way on this earth that I can live on £40 a week. I just couldn't do it. Matthew's cold turkey week has ended with a bump. Despite blagging his way through three days in London, he's still come in £11.07 over budget. Jay is not impressed. I mean, on the scale, of people that Benjamin and I have worked with, if I was really honest, you would be right down the bottom end of the scale. Really? Following a cold turkey. Right, OK. You know, I think what brings it home is, you know, I know the shower broke, and that's quite interesting, because the way you're living at the moment, you haven't got a spare penny for anything like that. Jay's about to show him the brutal reality of his future. You bring in £2,655 a month, right? That is how much you're spending at the moment. Every single month, £4,824.09p, which means every single month that is your overspend, £2,169.09p. I mean, we knew you were overspending. I mean, I knew I was overspending, but not by that much. That is a quite a daunting figure to look at. With such a massive overspend, he'll need to make some cutbacks, and none of his luxuries are safe. Clothing and footwear, £300 a month. We've cut that back to £40 on the basis that you could actually start wearing some of the things that are in your wardrobe that have still got the tags in. Socialising, £320 a month. That goes down to 60 For the whole He's... month? Yep. I can spend that just on a nice, let alone the whole month. Yeah. And then I'm afraid what we have slashed is all the amount of money that you spend on the internet. Gadgets, 305, 77. Holidays, 265. Hobbies, 150. DVDs, CDs, 60 pounds. All of these are quite big amounts. And when we add everything up on our recommended expenditure, we've still got an overspend here of 188 pounds 92. God, you know, what have we been doing for the last? Yeah, a couple of years and Buying I can see stuff, I can see where I've got my debt from there. Matthew's biggest asset is his two hundred and forty thousand pound house, and Jay wants him to consider borrowing twenty thousand pounds against the value to help with his overspend. And that would enable you to pay back those dreaded credit cards that are on really really high interest rates. Yeah, I mean that is an option, I suppose. I mean, it's an Look, Matthew, let's be honest. What is really weird to me is that you feel in any way in control with a debt of £55,000. You are going to have to release £20,000 out of your mortgage to solve this problem that you are responsible for getting yourself in. I mean, what exactly is the problem with doing that? I suppose that I could take it out of my mortgage, but then I'm thinking, is that robbing Peter to pay Paul? Right. So, well, it's a lot more of a cost-effective way of doing it. I mean, the thing is, is that we are at the crunch point now. There are no more choices, there is no more denial. You need this money to get you out of a huge hole. And if you carry on the way you're carrying on, you're going to lose your house. Do you see where I'm coming from, Matthew? Yeah, I do. I'm not being mean, but it's yeah. like, where is the evidence that would convince somebody that this time next year, you're not going to be in a worse-off position? If he follows Jay's budget plan, he could be debt-free in five years. Matthew might not be keen on all of Jay's suggestions, but it has given him food for thought. It's, it's just shocking, really, to think that I might actually spend five grand a month. I guess now I've just got to pay the damn thing back, haven't I? So, yeah, got to pay 55 grand back.
To help Matthew get back on the road to financial recovery, Jay hopes to tackle him on the hobby gadgets and gizmos he never even uses. Hi, Matthew, how are you? Hi, Jane, good, thank you. Yeah. Sorry to make you lug all no, this no. with Not you. Enough. I just wondered if you could talk me through some of the stuff that you've brought down today. Uh, I've bought loads of camping equipment, uh, tents, stoves, you know, all the camping gear that I needed for a holiday away. Fully kitted out? Fully kitted out. I was the only person on the campsite with my laptop, my straighteners and my hairdryer. So. Okay. <laughs> it is almost like sometimes you seem quite proud of, of wastefulness. And I just wonder with you whether you're buying all this stuff because of this obsession of having to look good or look the best the whole time. So if we had 10 people lined up all with their tents, it's like you win the rosette for having the swankiest tent. But then if we have 10 people lined up with their debts next to them, you're going to win the rosette for being the biggest spending moron, aren't you? Mm. I think, you know, we have to look at the complete sort of idiocy of buying for all these things that you might need when in fact what you actually need is some money in your bank account. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. What I want you to do is to go around your house and write yourself an inventory. And I want you to be really honest with yourself about whether you use things okay. or not. Mm -hmm. And if things are gonna be used, then we are going to use them. If they are not, then they have got to be sold. What I hope Matthew's got out of today is a question mark in his mind about how much money he wastes and why he does it. He just seems to be intent on spending on this fantasy world, buying for all these things he never does. He is not a man of hobbies. He does not need all these things. But three days later, Matthew is still fighting against any of Jay's suggestions. I did come home and have a look through my stuff, but as I was looking through my stuff, I was a bit sort of like, well, I don't want to sell it or I don't want to get rid of it. I, I like the stuff that I've got now. I'd rather just try and get a fix and stop me buying things. Like, randomly the other day, you know, even though I've been through this process, I still bought something off eBay, which I know I shouldn't have done, but I bought it and... <laughs> I've bought it now, so... I mean, I probably will use it. I don't know how much I'll use it, because it was, um, it was something for a sat-nav system on one of my phones, but I've already got a sat-nav system. So I didn't need it, but I still bought it. Benjamin is determined to get to the bottom of Matthew's behaviour. But he'll need to do more detective work if Matthew won't talk about anything difficult. What I thought I'd want to do with you is help you to understand uh, the, the drawbacks and the benefits of perhaps opening up a bit. Right, OK. OK? What I feel that you're doing to yourself is you're putting yourself in a cage where you can't get out right. because you think it's not OK to talk. So, what oh. do you think about that? You're just looking at it, what do you think? How do you feel? Um, it makes me feel very scared and I can feel... I can feel myself tensing it. Really? Yeah. Just looking Quite at it? Quite that, yeah. I'm going to invite you to step into your own emotional prison. <laughs> Quite... You don't even want to get in there. I oh, know. OK. What's it like in there? I don't like the cage at all. No, I don't like the, the restriction of it. <sighs> Why is it that you stay in here? Why don't you come out? Afraid of what others might think. Yeah, afraid of what others might think. Who's top of that list? Probably on there. OK. I want you to think of one thing that you f really feel like you need to say, but that you don't say because you're worried what your mother will think. It's kind of hard. I just want you to think about that for a moment. I'll give you some motivation. You can call me back any time. How do you feel when I'm moving further away from you? Worse. Worse, I yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> OK.
Now, if I just left you in here, it wouldn't be good, would it? No. Now, that is what's going to happen at the end of this programme. And what I want you to decide is, when I've left, do you want to still be in here, or do you want to try and take some steps to getting out? I want to be running through those fields. OK. Definitely. Well, here's the thing. You have an opportunity now to say something that feels really difficult and uncomfortable to you to say, but might help you to get out of your own emotional prison. Benjamin brings in the person whose opinion Matthew cares about the most. You're right, Matthew. It's my mum. It's your mum. So Matthew has something that he wants to say that he thinks will help him out of his own emotional prison. What should he say? It? Yeah. Um, I guess I've always felt that I could always be better, or I've always tried to be the best that I can. So now, and I know that you left me and I've been alone. I know that everybody loves me, but I don't know why I've always got it in my mind that I can always be that little bit better or that little bit more. Or... For your mum? Yeah, for everybody as well as mum. So there's a sense in which you feel like you're not good enough? Mm. Well, that's very brave of you to say so. I think I'm going to give you a, a shot at freedom. I'm just going to open the door with this. Now, what do you think of what he said? I didn't realise you felt that way. Um, and, and, you know, if you want to change in any way, that we're always there for you. Now Benjamin wants to show Matthew how different it can feel when he lets someone into his cage. How do you feel there together on your own? Fine. Yeah, because yeah. you've got each other. <laughs> you know, what's really interesting here is that when you're in here on your own, it's a really, really frightening place to be. When you let someone else into your emotional prison, it's not so scary. And in a way, that is what will set you free. And you come out together. And it, it was hard, but it's, you now it's over and done with and it's been said, it's a weight off my shoulders. I'm hoping now Matthew will come back to us and tell us more and open up more to us and that he'll start looking at, you know, that he's good as he is and he doesn't have to buy things to make himself look good. While Benjamin is making inroads with Matthew's psychology, Jay has hit a brick wall with his attitude and calls a powwow to discuss the way forward. How are you finding it with Matthew? Because I have to tell you, I'm finding him deeply annoying at the moment really? and very, very resistant. Well, I can really relate to that because in my work with him, he was very resistant and it was quite difficult, but I did get little bits and pieces and I did do a thing with his mother where, in a way, you know, he, he got it and there is definitely potential for movement there. But then, you know, what comes next? What he really needs to do is is start to open up to people in general. Mm. But I think you're right, he's bad at interacting with people. Mm. You know, I, I want him to sort of increase his hobbies because he spends a lot of time in buying more stuff on the yeah. internet. I mean, I know I'm being quite tough on him, but I just think if I let up, it mm. isn't going to help. He's one of the most difficult people we've ever worked with to reach, mm. and he's one of the people with the biggest debts we've worked with. It could go either way, really. I just, mm. you know, I don't know if we're going to be able to bring him in or if we're going to actually lose him. Mm. Jay's not about to let Matthew get the better of her and heads to Birmingham, where drastic action is needed to get him back on track. Hi, Hi Matthew. Jay. How nice are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Now, Matthew, at this particular juncture in time, mm. you can't afford to have all this stuff that you don't use sitting here like a security blanket mm. because we've got to find some way for you to generate some income to get paying these debts off. Mm. So I think we should get on, have a look, gather up a few things and seriously think about selling them. And I think the first two areas I'd like to start is wardrobe and garage, yeah? Uh, OK. Yeah, OK, we'll have a go, but I don't like change. That's my problem. Too right it is. I don't like change. <laughs> ah, ice skates. How many times have you used those? I don't actually think I've ever used them. 
Well, there we go. Let's get take that. They're coming with us. We're taking that. Those are coming with us. These are coming with us. Get me 10 DVDs that you couldn't give a toss if you never saw again. Yeah. Now, now. Oh, there's one. Why haven't you worn these? I don't even think I've tried them on. I mean, how thick mm. is that, really? Try the bloody things on. If they don't fit you, don't get them. <laughs> Having taken stock of the cast-offs Matthew's willing to part with, it's time to show him how to turn his online addiction into a cash cow. Across town, Sat Chokar runs a thriving business selling other people's items online. She takes a 30% commission, but Jay's hoping she might inspire Matthew to join the 70,000 Britons now making a living as online auction traders. You're expert at this, because the one thing you are is always well, online, buyer. except yeah. he's buying and yeah. not selling. But if we could turn it around, I think you might quite enjoy being a seller. Mm. Well, people get a huge yeah. buzz from watching their auctions when they're finishing. My problem is I've always slung it. I know, he yeah. just slings and it away. A lot of people do, a lot of people do, and I think they're realising the value of things so that you've So I'm not odd them. then to strange. No, you know, no, not at all. Me, but you're not going to be in that camp anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be in the cool, sorted, green, Selling recycled and debt-free camp. Yeah. I think if you think about what you've got lying around the house, you might think it's not worth anything to anybody, but in fact, mm. one man's junk is another man's treasure. You know, even if it's an old computer screen or a keyboard, and if it's going to get you a few pounds, why not? And it's better than slinging it. And you're yeah. recycling at the same time. And to make sure he doesn't stray back into buying, Jay has one more trick up her sleeve. It's a little mouse pad. <laughs> what do you think of that? That's quite good, actually. You I like, like that? that? Yeah. So any time you're tempted to spend and deviate from your research on selling, Look at the message right, yeah. on my mouse pad. I quite like that. You like That's that? good, actually, yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's good. Thank you very much, Dave. Cool. I always feel with him that I'm dragging him and bullying him and making him do something because he is so damn lazy. But I think he might persevere with doing a bit of selling because he does love being online and he's got all the stuff there and I just detect in him a spark of enthusiasm that I haven't seen before. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for him turning into an internet seller. Probably a good third of the stuff that I've got could easily go online, I would imagine. Whether it's sell or not, I don't know, but I suppose I could always try and see. And it's not long before he gets the selling bug. Matthew puts one of his duplicate gadgets up for auction and he's about to reap the rewards. Rich, come look at this. What is it? I'll sell that thing for 120 quid. No way. Yeah, I can leave it. The old sat now. Yeah, look. Who bought that for 120 pounds? Some guy called John. Thanks, John. <laughs> Benjamin is making progress with Matthew, but would like more inside information. He hopes another meeting with Mum Ruth might shed light on his past and give him some more vital clues. Let's have a look. Oh, that was him on the holiday land. I think it's Cornwall. Hold on, which one's Matthew? Matthew and Stephen. He really had orange hair, didn't he? Yeah, he's lovely as well. Covering that up well, isn't he? Mm. Hold on, here oh. we go. Uh, okay. Benjamin thinks he may have hit on something. So what happened to his ginger hair? University, come home with it blonde. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's always dyed it. I wasn't very really happy. <laughs> no? You no. like his hair? No. Yeah, I thought he had lovely hair. Oh, really nice, nice mm. yeah. Well, how did he get on at school at this kind of age? Do you think he got teased yeah, about his hair I at think school? So, yeah. Mm. So yeah. maybe when he That's got to university yeah. he decided to yeah. erase that? Yeah. You don't remember him being kind of very distressed about being bullied or anything at school? No, no. So you don't know, maybe, no. maybe not. Mm -hmm. I think that Matthew's mother found it quite difficult perhaps to talk about issues and to really feel comfortable at opening up. And maybe that explains where Matthew gets some of his reticence from. Also, it's pretty clear that Matthew now lives with a different hair colour to his natural one. And that is an indication, probably, of real issues over his own sense of identity. 
After winning the battle to get Matthew selling instead of buying online, Jay has another scheme to save him some cash. It's a way to fill time without filling shopping baskets. Now, Matthew, you're probably wondering why I told you to bring your rollerblade. Come through yeah. here. I want you to come and meet Nina. Hi, please meet This is Matthew. Hi, nice Hi Matthew. Yeah. Now, Matthew has tried this before. Ooh. How many times did you do it? Um, I've probably done it a couple of times, but I fell over probably a couple of times as well, so I just gave it up. But today, what we're going to do is get Nina to give you a personal lesson, because I think rollerblading would be a really good thing for you. <laughs> All right? Gosh. So just give yeah. it a go. That's it. Hands, hands, hands forward. Whoa! <laughs> Tired there. You're only halfway through. Excellent. Oh, exhausted. good effort. I tell very, you. very, very, very exhausted. I think he's pretty he not very bad, good. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's got talent. Is it better than the first time you did it and hated it when you fell over? Yeah. yeah. It is better than the first time. Well, good, I'm glad you said that, because all this is incredibly good for the skin. And Matthew spends about £100 a month on beauty products. Ooh. So that would definitely come down. I'd like to see you with a nice glow from being outside and exerting yourself, because what we're aiming to do is to try and find something that you can do in your spare time, rather than this automatic thing of getting home from work and just using your time to do internet mm. shopping. And you might even like it. To really try and get him hooked, she sends him to a Skate London event where he has the opportunity to meet enthusiastic, like-minded people. Uh. <laughs> well done. Hello. I'm very, very bad. <laughs> I'm very bad. I'm meeting everyone. Everyone was saying hi and how are you and wanting to get to know you and... You know, they're all sort of interested. It was really sort of like quite motivating. Hello. 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 This is Matt. Hello. Nice to meet you. So you've learned how to fall now, yeah? You're going to fall on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's how friendly people are. This is the skating community. These free events happen all over the country. And if it saves him £60 on a social night out and gets him using his skates, it's a win-win situation. I'd be quite interested to see what I'm like after maybe a couple of weeks of lessons and I'd probably like zooming down there at the front of the crowd. I would really like to think that I would go home and at least try them on again and skate down my street and see how I got on in my local area and then see how I go from there. Jay has had a breakthrough with Matthew, but Benjamin is about to set in the hardest challenge yet. He's already seen Matthew open up to his mum, but the real test is whether or not he can open up to the rest of the world. Benjamin writes out several statements on cards, hoping the phrases might challenge Matthew to confront some of the issues he avoids talking about. Part of Matthew's problem is that he's trying to manage other people's reactions to him. And I'm hoping that by showing these things to other people, he'll get reactions that he wasn't expecting. He's taking him to Birmingham's Merry Hill Shopping Centre to face his biggest fear, what others think of him. So, Matthew, the thing is, you're living your life really through other people's eyes, looking at you, right? right? Uh -huh. Do you agree with that? Hey, yeah. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, you, yes. you think a lot about what other people think of you, don't you? Yeah. So come with me to help out with that. I've got a little experiment here. I've got an earpiece for you and some props for you to hold. Benjamin asks Matthew to hold up the statement signs that force him to reveal more of himself to the world. Oh, OK. Wired for sound, he's ready to take centre stage with his first declaration. Excuse me, man. what do you think of this guy? I'm scared, but I'm not good enough. No, I think that's silly. You think that's silly? Yeah. Why? Does he, does he look good enough? He looks good. Yeah. 
Can I have a quick word? This guy, what do you think? I just don't understand it really. I, mean, I don't know what he's trying to put across. You don't? You don't get it? No. Don't really bother me a lot. Don't bother you? No. OK, brilliant. Did you learn anything about people's reactions to you there that was new to you? People just really didn't have an opinion either way, so right. it didn't really bother them. But you spend so much time worrying about what other people worry about you. Mm. And the fact is, a lot of the time, they don't really give a monkeys. Mm. So a lot of this effort and spending is kind of a waste of time. Mm. Might as well relax and be who you are. OK, I'll give you another one. Excuse me, what do you think of this guy? You shouldn't be afraid to tell people what you really feel. I think if you've got something that he needs to say, you should definitely say it. Because you shouldn't be afraid to tell people what Why you really feel. Why not? Are you never afraid to tell people what you really feel? Not really. Not really? He's rather nice, really, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. He's nice looking. Yes. But then he can't tell people how he feels. Well, then you'd have to bin him, wouldn't you? Would you? Yes, That definitely. wouldn't be any good for you? Oh, God, no. So which would you rather have, a scruffy bloke who was emotionally open or a tidy-looking bloke who was a bit... Oh, scruffy every time. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. On a roll, Matthew gets another sign that's a touch more personal. Do you think you're more or less interested in him holding the card or not holding the card? Well, I'm more interested in looking at him holding the card yeah. because I'm intrigued by what okay. he means by upsetting his parents. Yeah. Um, well, that was interesting. All of them said, well, you shouldn't be afraid to say what you really feel. Because people can look at you and think, well, you know, look at you, you're good looking, you're all sorted, you're well dressed. And then there's no vulnerability, so then there's no compassion towards you. If anything, there's envy. Mm. When you hold that up and people look at you and they feel some compassion, they can see that you're not everything you pretend to be. And then they can get closer to you and they can help you. Mm. Is that a revelation for you? It's something that I didn't know until today, so... Brilliant. Yeah, today has made me realise that be, by being sort of caged in, you know, like yeah. you showed me in the cage, that, yeah, yeah. you know, less people probably will like me because they don't know anything about me, so. Exactly. But it's easier said than done, and the last sign touches a raw nerve. It's a revelation too far for Matthew. Hold that. No chance. No, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, not doing it, not doing it, not doing it. <laughs> Where you going? Not doing it. What do you mean you're not, not doing, doing it. it? Not doing it. Come here and talk to me about not it. Not doing it. No, not doing Come it. Come here and talk to me. Not doing it. OK, look, let's put the sign down and talk about it. No, I'm not doing it. A point blank, not doing it. OK, OK, but let's put the sign down and talk about why you're not doing it, because this is exactly where you get to. No, it's nothing. No, I'm not. Honestly, I'm no, not no, doing no, it. No, 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 do what we need it. to talk about to do it. I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. Fine, I'm not going to make you do it, I promise you. I just want to know why you feel like this. Because I um, just don't think it's an issue. And that's got nothing to do with my spending, because it only costs me 20 quid to get my hair colored. But That's not the point. The point is, everything we just did was about you being more open. I'm not, honestly, I'm not... If, if that's do, going do on, I'm going, I'm going home, then no, I'm not doing Do you understand honestly. the difference to what we're talking about? Where are you going, Matthew? <laughs> Matthew has been pushed beyond his limits. He goes into hiding and refuses to see or speak to Benjamin for over a week. Finally, after much soul-searching, Matthew agrees to meet Benjamin to discuss what happened. I think today what I'm going to do is just literally tell him how daft I thought the exercise was uh, and obviously see what his thoughts are on my reaction to you know, the way that I strapped off and the way that I, I sort of just walked out and I didn't want to speak to anybody. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I just... I didn't want to even come back. I do feel that there's a difference between perhaps what I was asking Matthew to do and the scale of his reaction to it. And there's something there to understand about that difference, and that's what I want to look at today. Hi there. Hello. Nice to see you again. Yeah, you too. Last thing I saw of you was the back of you. Obviously, you were very distressed and upset. I wouldn't say I was distressed. I was just a bit like, what's the point? Although, yeah, I dye my hair. I don't dye it because I got bullied at school or anything. I mean, I could, dye, I could go back to my natural colour tomorrow mm -hmm. if I really wanted to, but I just prefer being dark. You see, my dilemma here is that I've seen you freak out about that issue. Mm -hmm. So I now don't know if you're finding it hard to tell me what's really gone on or if it's, uh, there's another way to understand this. Mm. 
What I want to do is I want to put some things on the board and just see if we can illustrate maybe some differences between where you are and where I am on this. Right, OK. okay? Mm -hmm. Just to try. The revelation about his natural hair colour clearly hurt, and Benjamin wants to explore the build-up to Matthew's extreme reaction. I was just pissed off. He starts by writing down what Matthew felt on the day. Yeah, I felt a bit almost like betrayed. I felt like I was being made to do things that I didn't really feel were relevant. On the opposite side, Benjamin writes his version of events and explains what he thinks caused the extreme reaction. So if I was given this by, say, a colleague and said, look, this has happened, what do I think? The logical conclusion for me is that this guy has been bullied over this taboo. Mm. So I'm going to put that up. If that, if that was my first guess, my second guess would be that you're still afraid, still worried about being bullied about this taboo. If I added those two things together, I think that makes a person want to look like they must be perfect, which is expensive. I suppose I can see where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. I don't think from your reaction it's completely untrue. I don't think I'm 100% No, I mean, I'll agree with you. I don't think it is completely untrue. At school, every now and then, I used to have, like, a name called or something like that. So these kind of experiences may have been there, and then you may have thought, well, you know, I've grown out of that, I've moved on, I don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah. But it's precisely not thinking about it that means you have to behave over it. And the behaviour that you exhibit is I must be perfect, which costs money. I'll tell you an interesting thing that happened. After you left that day at Merry Hill, I held up that sign in the window, and every single person that walked past that window laughed at me. Yeah. Which is why I didn't really want to bring it into this show, because I know that I will be humiliated probably for years afterwards, which is why I specifically how said... How do you know that, though? How do you know that? Because it's just... You see it, all on, you see it on TV and it's... You didn't see it on TV, you lived it. Yeah which is why I specifically didn't want it brought out, because it will have an adverse effect on my life, and I know it will, and it will be a negative effect. But I think what you're saying is that it did have an adverse effect on your life, it did have a negative effect, mm. and that that has been really hard for you, and you know how hard it is. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I think that when, when, I, when I suggested holding that sign, it broke that tremendous effort that you make to cover yourself up not just physically, but also emotionally. Yeah. I think that the key is to really just start to be as open as possible, as often as possible, and allow people in. And then when that moment comes when you want to walk away, like you did at Mary Hill, stay and talk about why you want to walk away. People don't talk, though, do they, these days? They well, do. A lot of people do. You'd be amazed. People do talk, you don't talk. So if you ask me what can you do about it, that's the answer. Hmm. Two months ago, Matthew Vokes had a shopping addiction that was out of control. He was facing a spiralling debt of £55,000, but continued living a lifestyle he couldn't afford, glossing over the reality of his situation. He was the toughest nut to crack, but lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has shown Matthew ways to curb his cereal spending. Try the bloody things on. If they don't fit you, don't get them. And how to get his kicks for free. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry helped him release his inner demons and start making sense of his spending. When you hold that up and people look at you and they feel some compassion and then they can get closer to you and they can help you. It's been two months since Matthew started down his road to financial recovery. Benjamin and Jay are meeting him for an update. Was this harder than you thought it was going to be? Definitely a lot harder than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be like a walk in the park and, you know, it'd be all like... Oh. But it's yeah. actually a lot harder than it looks, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, how are you getting on with your shopping? Has that yeah. been easy to cut down on? Uh, rather than buying online, I've started selling. selling online. Oh, well done. And have you put your skates on again? Whenever we take the dog for a walk, I've been... That's how you do it. I'm a rollerblade, so, <laughs> yeah. Pulls getting really good. Yeah. I've started to walk to work. 
So in 18 months' time, we'll be almost debt-free and stick thin. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the chats that we had earlier on was about whether you would think about releasing any of the equity from your property, 20,000, mm. to pay off the credit card debts. Have you had to think about that? Uh, my parents and my mum has actually agreed to give me 20,000 pounds towards uh, clearing my debt. What, um, what would stop you? I think I'd rather try and do it on my own rather than just go in. Yeah. Take the easier route out. It's so nice that your parents are there. But as you said, there is something to sort of sorting it all yeah. out yourself. Yeah. So if we came back in six months from now, would we find Matthew carrying on on this new path? Or do you think you're going to slip back? If you came back in six months' time, I'd be £6,000 less in debt. Oh. Yeah. And would you be opening up more to people? And I'd be selling more stuff, and <laughs> I'd probably be opening up a lot more to people. Yeah. Good work, Matthew. Good work. Well, well done. Plastic mat's been cut in half, just like all of his credit cards, so they are no more, and plastic mat is no more, so it's just mat for now.